I'm Okanagan Indian from British Columbia and Eastern Washington and also a Cherokee from the Southeast United States. I teach shamanic ways, shamanic practices, journey work, I do soul retrieval and all those kinds of things. So I've also done a lot of healing work here with people and readings and things like that. And you bring all those teachings from America, from Indian people to us? From my Native American people, but also I've been trained by Siberian shaman, the really old ones, 86 and 90, Grandmother Mingo and Grandfather Misha. And I've worked with uh, Polynesian uh, kahunas and uh, the people who know the Hunam medicine of uh, Hawaii and New Zealand, Aotearoa, and so forth, yeah. It's called Path of the White Wolf, and it's a nine-month journey around the medicine wheel for personal and family and even business uh, transformation and healing. Yes, the white wolf is the teacher, the guide. And so the white wolf is part of what uh, uh, we're experiencing as we go on that inward journey to find out more about ourselves and uh, to use the medicine wheel. Uh, the aspects of the medicine wheel I use in the East, it's the solo journey and what's new that's coming in for us. In the South, it's the place of our life, passion, and purpose, and it's our journey with the partners in our lives, uh, whether they're romantic or otherwise. And in the West, it's what we need to heal, and also the work that we have to do in our communities at this time. In the North, it's where our ancestors come from, what's encoded in our DNA, and what wants to be activated at this time and how we bring that out into the world. That's part of what's in Path of the White Wolf. And I also do, I'm just putting together an internet course that will start in January and groups of 10 that will be on Skype every two weeks using the book as a foundation. Each student will also have the opportunity to work with me and share what their personal dream is and their individual unique gifts and we'll work together to help explore those and connect them with their life purpose and how they're to be used in the world. All our indigenous elders have prophecies of this time and the prophecies about 2012 are that it's the end of one era, if you will, a very long era, and the beginning of something brand new. And the something brand new is about the evolution of the human species and learning how to co-create and to bring something in that combines ancient technologies and new technologies, the ancient foundational teachings with new ways of being so that we can co-create together. We can live in balance and harmony and beauty. And a large part of what I'm sharing these days is the values of relationship so that people can ground these things and learn how to co-create without conflict or at least with the ability to move through conflict to resolution and still hold the, the values of the relationship. The subtitle of your book is An Introduction in Shaman Way. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by that? Shamanism is not a two-week course or a two-year course. It's a life way. It's a path. And those who come into that path, you know, there's controversy. Uh, are you called to be a shaman or do you decide to be a shaman? Well, I guess I don't want to pin that down to one category or the other. And... If you make the decision to be a shaman, then there's going to be challenges because the spirits are going to say, do you really? And what does that mean? What are you willing to commit to? Are you willing to surrender? Are you willing to give up everything you've ever known and walk in the spirit world? And if you do that, how do you balance in the physical world? So. 
the book can only be an introduction. Yeah, and as people are introduced, as they feel whether they're really called to this path, or if they only want a few practices to use, then we can determine whether they go farther or not. And when you don't want to be a shaman, or uh, but uh, uh, want to do some studying in your book, what, what can bring it to uh, those students? Well, for those students, what it is is a pathway of self-transformation and healing. Yeah, And it's a lovely pathway. And they can use it the rest of their life without going any deeper. Yeah, But if they also want to learn more shamanic practice, things about learning how to work with the spirits of the underworld and the overworld and this middle world and all that kind of thing, then we can do that too. If they want to learn about herbal medicines, say, or um, ceremonial facilitation, or how to counsel people and use some of these practices to help them, then we can go to those places too. Mm. Yeah? What is your definition of shamanism? Of, or shaman? Yeah. I would say that it's the ability to connect to all the different dimensions of the spiritual worlds. And they are many. It's not just above, below, and middle world. Uh, the Bible says that our Father's house has many rooms. Well, that's very true. Yeah. And the person who follows this as a life way eventually connects to many of those different dimensions, not just a few. And you have to learn how to walk in balance with that. It's not an easy path. Yeah. All our decisions are made unto the seventh generation. We try to connect with the spirits of land and place, with the water, with the air, the fire within all of us to see what needs to happen to keep everything in balance seven generations from now. Most modern people are more concerned with, where do I get the next toy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, that's fun, but we're not looking far enough ahead. We see all the things that are happening in the world now that are out of balance and full of pollution and Mother Earth has her own way of telling us that we're way far out of line. The shamanic people, we pray about that all the time. We hold energy for different places on Earth. My own mountain, Mount Rainier in Seattle, has been ready to blow for years and years and years. And our elders are continually in ceremony and prayer to keep that mountain balanced so that she doesn't have to blow up, yeah? When the tsunami happened in Japan at Fukushima, a friend and I uh, were in prayer the day before that and were journeying and a huge dragon came into the room and we both said, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> this is big, what's this about? And the dragon said, we need prayer. We need people to remember us. I went into journey shortly after Fukushima, and four dragons came. The dragon of the east was yellow, and she's disappearing. The dragon, of, because nobody believes anymore. The dragon of the south is red and full of fire and controls all the volcanoes. And he said, watch out. If you don't do something soon, we're going to go. The dragon of the west is black and its belly is full of radi radiation and it's beneath Japan and it's trying to absorb that radiation and transmute it and it's very sick. The dragon of the north is white and she's ice and she's melting and they're the fort gatekeepers and we are the ones who are responsible for what's happening to them. So the message they gave me is pray for us. 
work to bring things back into balance. Talk. Speak your truth. Stand up for what's right and what you know. And no more sitting down or pretending that this isn't happening. It is. And it's time to do something. In my travels, three years ago, people never asked me the questions that they ask now. And all of a sudden, people all over the earth are saying, something's changing. I feel it. Something's opening in me. What is this about? What do I need to do? Help. Mm -hmm. Huh? Those of us who've been awake for a while, we're the helpers. We're the ones that can teach them and share with them and help them open even more and become not only aware, but responsible. Hmm. And those students you are going to guide, they are, are going to be the new guides? Oh, yes. They and the children who are coming in right now. The children who are coming in, the indigos and the crystal children, the violet ray children. Our generation and the generations before us, we came through the birth canal and we forgot everything that we'd ever decided to do here. And we've spent most of our lives waking up to it again. Yeah, These kids don't forget. They come in knowing exactly what they're here for. They're not interested in anything that doesn't support their mission. And they're very challenging because, especially to their parents, yeah, because they're not going to take any nonsense. They don't want to learn anything that's not applicable to what they came for. And they will challenge everything and everybody. And it's good. We need to be challenged. It's a song that says the seed of the mind and the heart is very strong and needs to be remembered now. Women be strong, men be strong. This is our time. 